So let us try to understand the concept of inheritance using an example. So here I will create a class count. This will act as the base class. I will create another class. countdown and this class will be the derived class okay so we have two classes in this program count and countdown count is the base class and countdown is the derived class okay now let us add features to this class count so earlier we had two sections the public section and the private section Okay, but there is another keyword protected. So, in this program, in class count, I will create two sections, the protected section and the public section. I will explain the use of protected keyword a few minutes later, but for the time being, let's go ahead with this protected section. Okay, so this protected section contains an unsigned integer count okay so unsigned means it can hold only zero or positive values it cannot hold any non-negative values okay so this is the only data member which we will have and this is the protected data member now let us have the public section in the public section uh, let us create some constructors here count so this is the default constructor, that is the no argument constructor. And let us also create one argument constructor. So in this, the data member count will be initialized to C. Sorry. Okay. And now let us have some functions. Unsigned int get count. It will return us the value of variable count. Because the count variable is an unsigned integer, so the return type of this function is unsigned integer. Let us have another function, void increment. This function, when called, will increment the value of data member count. Okay. So, these are the features of class count. What are the features? It is, it is having a data member count. It has a function to print the current value of count. And it is having a function to increment the value of count okay and these are the constructors which are used to initialize the data number count okay and now we have this count down class this class will inherit the features of count so how to inherit the features of count this is done here where you write the name of the class so we need uh, this keyword class, then name of the class, then after the colon, you write an access specifier. You can write public, protected, or private, but here I'm writing public. We will also see the use of other access specifiers later in this chapter. And after the access specifier, we will write the name of the class which we want to inherit. Okay, so here we are inheriting the class count through public access specifier. What it means? Public access specifier means whatever is there in this class count, it will become the member of this class. So if there is a protected data member there, it will become a protected data member of this class. If there is a private data member or member function it will uh, become the private data member of this class or member function of this class if there is a 
public member of this class, it will become a public member of the uh, derived class also. Uh, so do not get confused if you are not getting it. We will explain it through a lot of examples slowly. Okay. So for the time being, let us stick to this example. This is a basic example which will uh, help you to get a glimpse of inheritance. Okay. So this class has got all the features of this derived class. That is, it has got this data member count. It has got this get count function. It has got this increment function. Can it inherit the counter, uh, this constructors also? No, constructors will not be inherited. Why? Because the constructor which is used to initialize a class is having the same name as the name of the class. Okay. So, the count constructor which is used here, it will, it will be used to initialize the objects of class count. If you want to initialize the objects of class countdown, you need to create constructors of class countdown, which will have the name countdown. Okay. So, in the public section, we can also add new features to this class. So, new feature which we are adding here is word decrement. Okay. So, we can decrement the value of count also. Okay. So, you can see here, although we have not created any member count in this class countdown, but still we are making use of count. We are changing the value of count. It means this class is inheriting all the features of the upper class, of the base class. So, it is also inheriting count and we are decrementing count here. Okay, and let us create the main function. In the main function, let us create an object of class countdown C1. Okay, what will happen? There is no constructor in class countdown. The compiler will create its own default or no argument constructor. And what that constructor will do? Uh, most probably, that constructor will initialize the value of count to 0. Can we verify this? Yes. How? We can verify this by making a call to get count. But the question is, there is no get count in this class. there is no get count in this class, then how are we able to call get count function? Because this class is inheriting all the features of this class, so get count is also inherited. So that is why we are able to make use of get count, c get count. And let us run this and see it yourself. So it is giving us value 0. It means count is being initialized to 0. Okay. And then let us try to call c1 dot count, uh, sorry, increment. And after increment, let us call get count to ensure that the value is actually implemented. Okay. So here also you can note that implement is not written here, not defined here, but still implement is uh, a member of countdown class because it has inherited this from the base class count. So the value has become 1. Similarly, we can call decrement also so the value has become zero again okay so this countdown class has 
got this variable count it has got this get count function it has got increment function plus it has got its own defined function decrement okay and what about the base class as i said base class remains unchanged by inheritance we can still create the uh, objects of base class okay c out c2 dot get count so it is being initialized to zero okay then if i write c2 dot increment the value will be incremented so from zero it has become one but can we call decrement c2 dot decrement no we cannot call decrement because decrement is not a member of this base class count we have added it to the derived class and base class remains unchanged okay 